When particles interact with each other, the conservation laws of classical physics, such as conservation of energy, linear momentum, angular momentum, and electrical charge, all hold up. However, to get a full picture of the interaction between particles, we need to discuss two new conservation laws. The first of these conservation laws is the law of conservation of baryon number. A baryon is simply a particle that is made up of quartz. These include the protons, neutrons, antiprotons, and antineutrons. According to the law of conservation of baryon number, each particle is assigned a baryon number. Protons and neutrons get a baryon number of positive 1. Their antiparticles, antiprotons, and antineutrons get a baryon number of negative 1. All other particles, including electrons and positrons, get a baryon number of 0. The conservation of these numbers occurs when the different combinations of these particles interact. So when we take any combination of these particles and smash them together, the total number of baryons that we end up with will be equal to the number of baryons that we started with. For example, say you have a neutron that is decaying into a proton, an electron, and an antineutrino. To determine whether or not baryon conservation occurs, simply assign appropriate baryon numbers to the particles on each side. A neutron has a baryon number of positive 1, as does a proton. An electron and antineutrino both have baryon numbers of 0. The total baryon number on the left is positive 1. The total baryon number on the right is also positive 1. This means that the baryon number is conserved in this decay of a neutron. What if we consider the interaction between a proton and a neutron? When we get a proton, antiproton, and an antineutron as a result. Protons and neutrons both have a baryon number of positive 1. Antiprotons and antineutrons both have a baryon number of negative 1. On the left side of the reaction, we have a total baryon number of positive 2 while on the right side we have a total baryon number of positive 1. In this case, baryon number is not conserved, so this indicates that this particular reaction will not occur. The second conservation law having to do with particle interactions is the conservation of lepton number. Leptons, remember, along with quarks, are considered to be the basic building blocks of matter and are often referred to as the elementary particles. According to the law of conservation of lepton numbers, each particle has assigned a lepton number. This is a bit more complicated because there is a separate requirement for each of the different types of leptons. So each particle is actually assigned an electron lepton number, a muon lepton number, and a tau lepton number. Leptons, which include electrons, muons, and taus, and their corresponding neutrinos, get a value of positive 1. Antileptons, which include positrons, antimuons, and antitaus, and their corresponding antineutrons, get a value of negative 1. All other particles get a value of 0. The key here is knowing your leptons and to stick with assigning the same set of numbers for each particle in your reaction. Let's look to see if a muon will decay into a muon neutrino, an electron, and an electron antineutrino. First we can use the electron numbers. A muon has an electron lepton number of 0. A muon neutrino also has 0. An electron has an electron lepton number of positive 1, and the electron antineutrino has an electron lepton number of negative 1. The numbers on the left add up to 0, and the numbers on the right add up to 0. So the electron lepton numbers are indeed conserved. Then we can do the same thing for the muon numbers. A muon has a muon lepton number of positive 1. A muon neutrino also has a positive 1. An electron has a muon lepton number of 0, and an electron antineutrino has a muon lepton number of 0 as well. The numbers on the left add up to positive 1, and the numbers on the right add up to positive 1. So the muon lepton numbers are conserved. Finally, we can use the tau numbers. A muon has a tau lepton number of 0. A muon neutrino also has 0. An electron has a tau lepton number of 0, and the electron antineutrino has a tau lepton number of 0. The numbers on the left add up to 0, and the numbers on the right add up to 0. So the tau lepton numbers are conserved. 